Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, we're gonna show you the how and why for moving your CSS out of your HTML and into its own CSS file that you can reference via a link in your HTML. So let's check that out right now. So in the last video, we got our first taste of CSS where we changed the color of our H1 tag and we made it into this eventual purple color that we had here. And you can see it right here. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about CSS and we're gonna talk about HTML in general. Now, we saw how easy it was to simply add this style tag to the top of our page here. Well, let's say we have another page, right? Let's say we make an About Us page. So let's go ahead and let's click New File up on our folder and save this as about.html. Now let's go ahead and copy the contents of index.html into about.html. And the only difference will be we'll change the header to say About Me, okay? Now when we come to this page, you can refresh and let's actually edit the path here to say about.html. And you can see it says about me. Now the only difference being that it says about me rather than our first website. So that's great. It follows the same convention we started before where we had the purple text, we had the body text, and it matches. It looks the same, right? So they look very similar. But let's say we've decided we hate this color of purple. It's no longer what we wanna use. We don't like it and we wanna go with a dark gray. Well, we can come to our code here and let's go ahead and modify the CSS here and we can type 333333. So we have six threes here, which is gonna be a dark gray and we can refresh. And on the about me page, we can refresh. And now you can see the color gray is there. Well, the big problem here is now, if we come back to our first website, the color's still purple. So then we have to head to index.html and we have to change this to 333333, okay. And now we refresh and they're both gray. So this illustrates the main problem with having your styles in each individual page. The problem is we now had to type the exact same thing twice just to get it to work. Now, one of the most cited properties of using CSS or HTML in general and coding is don't repeat yourself. Now, there's usually tools to help you not repeat yourself, and we certainly don't want to have to write all of our styles on every single page and copy and paste anytime anything is changed. So to do this, we can actually move our CSS into a separate file, a CSS file. So let's go ahead and right click on our first site folder once more and click select new file. Now when we save this file, we can save it as styles.css. Okay, now this is going to be a CSS file. Now let's go ahead and cut this H1 color completely out of here and delete this style tag. I'm gonna do that from both the About Us page and the Index page. Okay, uh, you can confirm that by refreshing your page and our title should once again be black. Now if we head to styles.css, we can paste in the H1 like so, and we want this to be this color here, but let's say we want this to be a bit more bold. Let's take it back to that really ugly green color just so we can see when it goes and changes. So here we have the styles.css file. All it has in it is H1 and the H1 color is set to green. Now we can refresh our page and you'll notice nothing happens. Now, nothing happens because we're not telling this HTML file to look into the CSS file at all. It's nowhere being is it told that there is a CSS file that even exists. So for this to work, we wanna go ahead and type in our head. We can use the element, the link tag here, so we can say link. Now, remember when we use this char set equals? Well, that's called an attribute. So we had this attribute char set here, and we want to go ahead and have another attribute, which is going to be rel. Now rel stands for the relationship. It's going to be a style sheet. So that's the relationship. And now we need to tell the HTML file where to look, and we can do that with an href. So an href stands for a hypertext reference. Now we want to reference the CSS file that we created. We can do so equals and then quotes. 
Now we can say styles.css. Now let's finish off that link tag just by closing it off there. Now what's gonna happen is that when index.html loads, it's going to see this link and it sees that it's a style sheet and it knows to look at styles.css. So let's save this, let's come to our page, we can refresh, and you can see it's getting that green color. Now to get our about me to also include that green color, we can go ahead and copy this link style sheet and we can paste this in here as well. So now this is referencing the same style sheet and you can see they're totally in sync, just like so. Now if we head to our styles, we can now change this value and we can do so to make it an ugly red color instead of an ugly green color. So we can change that and without having to update it in more than one place, we now have the red headline on both pages. So this is just one of the many advantages you'll have from having a separate CSS file and allows you to have all of your styles completely organized. Now, if you want to change the content of a particular page, you will come to that pages.html. So now if you wanna change the way your site looks, you'll know that you can just come to styles.css. Now, I should have a word about this path here. So in an href, this is referred to as the path. Now, because the styles CSS file is in the exact same folder as index.html, you'll notice that we don't have to include anything other than the name of the file. However, if this was in a different folder, such as a folder named styles, we could say styles forward slash and then styles.css. Now you'll see different sort of paths in here. So without anything in front of a title, it's just referring to the current directory. So since we're in index.html, it's referring to this first site directory here. You may see somewhere dot dot then forward slash and what dot dot forward slash, it means one file directory back. So this is no longer referring to this first site's folder. However, the folder that contains this first site's folder. And if we were to say forward slash styles.css, this is now referring to the root of the directory. Since this site is not being hosted by a web server, if we save this, let's take a look at exactly where it's looking for this file if we have forward slash. Since I only changed it in this page, you can see it's already not getting our styles. Let's come to the code here. Now, this is a great way to troubleshoot. If your website's not getting the styles, you're making a change and it's not working, one of the best things to do is to make sure that the page is actually getting the style sheet. It's the reference, is to make sure the path to the style sheet is actually correct. You can do that by viewing the source. You can see that the link to the style sheet is now a clickable link. If we select this link, you can see that, let's open this link in a new tab. You can see it's not found. And if you look at the path, you can see it's looking at just the root of our file system. Where this is looking at users, Estlinsky sites, level up tutorials. So you can see that these paths are instantly not the same. So this forward slash is looking at the absolute root here. So if yours isn't working, check to see by right clicking on this and selecting open link in a new tab and then seeing why this path doesn't match up with the path that you might expect. So let's come back to our page and let's go ahead and delete that forward slash. We can come back here, refresh. Once again, we have the red text. Now let's actually refresh our source here and let's see what it looks like when it's actually correctly linked. We can open this link in a new tab and you can see we can read our style sheet just like we could in our text editor. So I'm gonna close out that and we've now moved our style sheets to their own file. It's separating the concerns, right? The HTML should not define how your website looks. Only the CSS should be defining the style of your website. So now we have the styles in the CSS by moving it into a separate folder and we have the structure and content in our HTML by having those in their own folders. Now, you may have a need for more than one style sheet. However, it's most common to really just have one style sheet because every single time a website needs to load another file, it takes some time for the website to find that file and then to load it. So if you keep having a whole bunch of different style sheets, it's gonna take some additional time and that's not very good performance. So it's common practice to really have your CSS be one file. 
Now there's all sorts of other performance optimizations that you can make that we can talk in later videos. However, for now, we are going with our CSS in its own file. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter or Facebook at Level Up Tutorials. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.